It's the year 2020. The world's knowledge is a search away. Cars can drive themselves. And our phones are basically supercomputers. Despite this, most built environment engineers still use pencil and paper, a few spreadsheets, Microsoft Word and PDFs. There are quite a few engineering analysis programs, of course, although contrary to the perception, there are many engineers who don't actually use them much. Only a small part of engineering is calculation after all. Project engineers, for example, spend all their time on program, procurement, and going to meetings. Even design engineers spend most of their time creating documentation rather than crunching numbers. It's no secret that this industry is slow to adopt technology. But is there actually any new tech that can change engineering? And are there ways that you could use it to outperform traditional engineers in the future? In this video, we outline some clear trends where skill in modern tech could differentiate you from typical engineers working today. The first one is that modeling is taking over from 2D drawings. Traditionally, engineers have communicated design through sketches and drawings. In current practice though, engineering drawings are slowly being replaced by models. These are usually referred to as BIM or building information models, or increasingly now they're called digital twins. Evidence of this change happening include it now being common for models to be shared directly between designers without waiting for the drawings to be produced. To speed up program, fabrication models are commencing based on work in progress rather than waiting for the drawings again. And there's even been projects where there's no drawings at all. And for these, the site workers are discouraged from using printed plans and they rely on tablet computers and technology to locate design elements and even lay out the reinforcement. So how can you use all this to your advantage? Despite the clear trend towards model use, many engineers today do not know how to work with models all that well. Understanding how to use and create them is therefore a huge advantage. Some relevant skills for this include navigating models in Revit, so cutting sections using filters and extracting geometry. Editing in Revit, so being able to change member sizes and draw details in 2D. Knowing how to use Rhino and Grasshopper, which is increasingly being used between architects and engineers. Converting models between different formats, so you'll have your analysis file and then your drafting model. And being able to sketch in 3D for connection details and reinforcement. The second big area is that automation is making design a lot faster. Pretty much every year the time allowed for engineering design is being reduced. This is often called accelerated program or it can simply be being directed to use preliminary documentation to fast forward and start later stages earlier. One way engineers can adapt to this new environment is by getting assistance from automation. The simplest and common way engineering calculations have been automated in the past is through spreadsheets, which is a lot quicker than doing them by pencil and paper. These days, although producing sketches, drawings and models can also often be automated through technologies such as parametric design. 
This technique relies on a set of rules for creating building elements formed into a script. For example, a script could be to draw structure, so beams and columns for example, based on the input of architectural geometry. The advantage of this is that when the geometry changes, the building elements automatically update to suit. Generative design for engineers often means going a step further with the script of rules being designed so that the computer can actually design itself. Instead of just rules about geometry, the script could specify maximum stress that a material could support, for example. So the computer can try many different iterations and determine which material should be located for maximum efficiency. Using this pro process can often lead to organic type shapes, such as the one on your screen. It's still early days for this technology, however, but one that is likely to have a pretty bright future. Skills in parametric design and generative design, therefore, are pretty useful. And they can include the basics of understanding how to use Grasshopper, understanding how to use Dynamo, which is built into Revit. And on the generative design side, I would suggest possibly Fusion 360 and Revit also has some built-in capabilities, although I'm not an expert in that area. So the third area I'm discussing in the video is future building technology. So not all the technology changes related to engineering, design and documentation, so the stuff that you do in the office. Another area where modern engineers can outperform others is in the knowledge of future building technology and trends. One trend that's clearly gaining more excitement in Australia and other countries is modern engineered timber design. Engineered timber has been slow to catch on for many years, partly because the industry was so un unused to it and partly because of the difficulty of sourcing modern timber materials such as CLT and glue lamb. CLT is cross laminated timber and glue lamb is timber sections formed of multiple strips and basically glued together. In the last few years, however, engineering timber product technology has increased and they've been become more readily available. Also, there's now several sources of modern timber connection detail fittings which allow robust standard and hidden joints. As a result, architects and builders have become pretty excited to design with timber in larger scale buildings as well as smaller residential stuff. Timber's got different engineering challenges when used at scale than traditional steel and concrete. Engineers who become experienced in designing with it are likely to become sought after in the future, in my opinion. Another major trend in building design is towards environmentally sustainable solutions. Design goals such as Green Star can mean reducing use of materials, with some being more critical than others. For example, concrete has a high carbon footprint. Lightweight structures and timber can help with these aims. Other goals like passive house, for example, are more of a concern for service engineers, but do have implication for structural engineers as well. Passive house directs designers to have an insulated envelope around a building. This can mean that foundations only have limited contact with the ground, for example. Sustainability is a huge factor in modern building design. A knowledge of the engineering implications for this trend in your discipline is well valued already and it will be more so in the future.
So what can you take away? Whether it's in modeling or automation for documentation, or if it's in future building trends such as timber or sustainability, technology is actually having an impact on engineers. Gaining an understanding of how to work with these new techniques could give future engineers an advantage over traditional approaches, especially because change can be slow to be adopted in this industry. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.